Nassim Haramein was brimming with curiosity and began asking some of the big questions at the age of nine when he had his first experience of greater knowledge. He passed into his young adult years living in a van so he could afford to study the world of physics and living systems full time. He was ultimately labeled a brilliant rebel in the world of physics. In August of this year, he entered another phase of his life as he was acknowledged by his peers to be one of the most original and paradigm-shifting physicists of the day when he received a prestigious scientific award for his black hole theory, which applies to all of creation. Three years I've wanted to meet you. Finally, we get together in this lovely place here. And you recently just had, um, I, I think, something that was very powerful in your own career by being acknowledged within the physics community. Because you were a bit of a rebel and renegade. You <laughs> yes. discovered a lot of this on your own without those books. <laughs> right. And so now to come into your, your fullness, um, tell us a little bit about what happened recently when you were honored with an award over the Swarchild Proton, Proton paper. Uh, yeah, it was great. I just... Uh, it was so unexpected because uh, this is a physics conference in Yaz University at the math department, and uh, I, it's uh, every two years. And I was, you know, um, invited to present a paper a, a paper there this year. And so, since it was an invited paper, I was a little bit uh, more pushy, a little bit more open about. Uh, the meaning of what I wanted to say and uh, a little more radical, you know. And so I was not actually was expecting a little bit of backslash when yeah. I got there after, you know, submitting my paper. And so it was really um, a surprise uh, in the middle of the conference. Uh, the the director of the conference took me aside, and I thought, oh, here we go, <laughs> you know, he might ask Maybe me to retract escort. my paper <laughs> or something. And he told me, I noticed that you were leaving before the award ceremony this year, this week, and I, you know, I would like you to stay. And I thought, why? And he said, well, you know, you won the best paper award in physics and I you must was, have almost fainted I almost fainted I it, it was I was in shock I didn't know what to say and so he was looking at me like you know okay uh, can you stay you know and I'm like <laughs> oh yeah I'll change my plans <laughs> and it was uh, it was remarkable I, I, it tells you how much uh, things are changing because this is a very radical paper this is a very hopeful message. It is. It, it's a paper that, that says that every atom is a mini black hole, that it has infinite density, that it has infinite potential, that everything has singularity at its center. Um, and the paper, in its first few pages, elaborates uh, and shows um, uh, mathematically that uh, the vacuum energy, the structure of the vacuum itself uh, interlinks or entangles all protons, that the proton being the nuclei of an atom, the, that all the nuclei of atom are entangled because of the structure of the vacuum, that the structure, that, that the vacuum is not a passive vacuum but an active vacuum that has a role to play in the creation of the, our, our material world but as well is the structure that connects all things. So actually this is a mathematical rendering of the concept everything is one so that it actually is uh, mathematically proven. This is huge that, that you would be honored in this way because this really has to turn a lot of other people's papers that were submitted upside down. Why do you think this happened and why do you think now? Well, especially considering your, your project's called the Resonance Project. That's a big word right there. Yes. <laughs> why do you think this happened now? Oh, I think that um, the world of physics and the world in general is transforming and that there's an opening that's occurring. And certainly in physics, um, you know, there's a level of arrogance that's slowly uh, fading away. You know, not so long ago when I started in... Uh, bringing my work to the physics community some 15 to 20 years ago. The tendency was to think we've got the universe pretty well all figured. 
and all we need is a few little things to work out and then we've ha we have it. Just have to and connect a couple little dots. Right, and so there was a lot of, um, you know, arrogance in the way, you know, physicists were interacting with new ideas and so on. And so it was extremely difficult to be heard. But uh, since then, a lot of failures in our theories have come forward, a lot of experiments in the laboratory and you know, data from cosmological instruments and so on have shown us that there's anomalies that we cannot explain with the standard model and all sorts of things are coming up. And so, uh, you know, a certain level of failure of string theory and so on. And I think that uh, it's, uh, it's changed the world of physics uh, and that physicists and scientists in general are returning to that um, you know, uh, level of awe and that, you know, that... More of an open inquiry that had been lost and corrupted. Right. Exactly. And, uh, that's and, fabulous. Yeah, and, and so they're much more um, willing to look at new ideas and new theories. And I think this paper was so classical. Uh, you know, it's a peer review of some 10 or 11 uh, peer reviewers on the panel that looked at it. And I think that it was, it's so classical. It's like 14 equations and eight pages, and it gets rid of the strong force and uh, many concepts of quantum theory, and it solves the atomic structure in a classical way. It's so beautiful mathematically uh, that I think it took them, you know, on a magic carpet ride, and uh, they thought they had to give the award to it. I was very, very honored. Uh, well. <clears throat> on behalf of everybody else in, on the planet, I'm thrilled that this kind of humility is starting to come back mm -hmm. this, because this is a time for inquiry. And mm -hmm. that for you to be honored is really kind of the penultimate in that, in that understanding, you know? Yeah, I'm really excited. And I think it's, uh, it helps to get uh, other physicists to look at it, to get some uh, credibility in the physics I'm writing, and to make people aware that we are not living in a finite world that, you know, the atomic structure itself has this infinite potential within it that, you know, when people are talking philosophically or spiritually about their infinite nature and all this stuff, it doesn't have to be outside the physical world, that the actual physical world is what they're talking about, that, you know, philosophy and spirituality are not divorced from the atomic structure, that the atomic structure is actually a manifestation of uh, this dynamic of creation that, you know, we might call uh, consciousness or spirituality and so on. And this is interesting because what you're, the implications of these mathematical formula that you very elegantly put forth um, and are now being accepted has very deep spiritual or consciousness oriented awareness oriented implications yeah it's not so obvious by reading the paper paper directly right. I, I didn't in this statement that all protons are um, entangled that I make at the beginning showing that the the amount of energy available in the vacuum structure inside the proton equates the mass of the universe so that all the mass of the universe is present in each proton in the vacuum energy, showing that the vacuum connects all protons. Uh, I didn't that statement. It's not so obvious to see how this relates to consciousness. But if you take all of my per papers together and you understand the theory globally, uh, you know, holistically, you start to you start to see how uh, that that you know, it starts to give a meaning to the word consciousness because people use the word consciousness all the time. You know, like, oh, the universe is all conscious, everything is consciousness, but then there's not really any definition of consciousness. And I think that's what this work kind of brings along as well, is that it starts to describe consciousness as a fundamental dynamics of the forces of nature. And basically this paper I just published eliminates some of the, f it's two of the forces of a quantum world. And, and, and so we are left with only two forces in the universe, two classical forces, gravity and electromagnetism. And you know, one is basically the 
the vacuum energy moving inwards towards the center, gravitational pull, and the other one is the electromagnetic field or the vacuum structure moving away from center. And so you have a radiative pulse and a gravitational pulse, and the two are feeding back on each other. And that's how the universe learns about itself. It's because there is a fundamental feedback in the structure of space.